Senator Ifanyi Uba. He joins us from Inaiwi in Anambra State. Thank you so much, Senator Uba, for joining us tonight. And perhaps uh, congratulations will be in order uh, after your graduation or your convocation, uh, having a degree now in law, um, uh, that perhaps will settle the controversy over uh, the issues around the, your certificate, uh, is it? Well, um, well done, uh, Sean. How are you? I'm not I'm hearing not... you very well, but okay, okay. I'm not hearing, please. Can you repeat your question, please? <laughs> I was congratulating you for a successful okay. run at a degree program in law, uh, which you had a convocation. It was all over the social media. Uh, some of your uh, politician friends, you graduated, and you've had this controversy about your education qualification in past elections. But I said now, that perhaps has been laid to rest, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, politics comes with a lot of uh, propaganda. Um, I have no problem. Um, I mean, um, I shouldn't be proud of uh, having um, gone to school at a later age. But uh, determination, um, I know the steps I have taken in life and, and um, the challenges I've had in life. And at the end of the day, I mean, I, I can only say to God be the glory. Uh, it's all over. I mean, I'm going forward. There's no monopoly of wisdom in the world and you can never stop from learning so knowledge is power and i'm continuing moving forward i don't want to look backward i don't want to look at uh, some um, uh, critics and then um, political propaganda but then um, the end justify the means and we are we are moving forward thank you so would you say now with this degree that you own now uh, you have it in the kitty would you say you are better prepared to be the governor of Anambra State? Well, uh, being, uh, becoming the governor of Anambra State is something that one desires. That's the minimum requirement of um, academics. Uh, the most important thing is not about academics. Honestly speaking, it's about your understanding of the terrain, your understanding of the problems of your people, and your understanding on how to solve it. Um, govern, government is not a, a governorship a candidate or Government is not about one man, it's a collective thing. It's about you understanding how you are going to get people, integrate people, and make um, the necessary change. It's about contentment. You know, when you get in there, how to carry people along, how to blend with people, how to put yourself on the threshold of legacy. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Thank you. If there is one thing, this is your... Um... Accomplishment, this is your education accomplishment as, as thought you, what would that be? Well, it has made me to be uh, a better person uh, before the public. It has also uh, trained me uh, morally. Um, going through the four walls of the university is not a joke. So it's uh, bring me before um, the, uh, the current affairs, the things that I need to know um, about knowledge, especially a um, law degree. And also, I am also a lawmaker, so you can see combining these two uh, makes me a better person. So in essence, um, in the eye of uh, the voters, the last time you ran for office, and now, I mean, I'm not talking about when you wanted to be senator, I'm talking about when you wanted to be governor the last time, and now that you're running for office, has anything changed? Have you told the people that you now have a law degree? Have you told them you have improved yourself? Have you told them that you're better prepared? What are you telling them about your newfound uh, um, achievement, academic achievement? Academics aside, I'm telling them that I understand their problem and I'm contented and I'm going to give them quality leadership. It is not about education. It's about understanding the problems, the peculiar problems of my people, how we can change the face of our state, how we can make Anambra State a mini nation inside the nation. That is what we are trying to do. <laughs> we'll get into the nitty gritty of that in a short while. First and foremost, uh, this is not the first time you've wanted to be 
a governor of Anambra State. Why do you want to be a governor of Anambra State? Well, Benga, you know, um, I have championed the cause of uh, helping to set so many uh, governors in Nigeria um, through my benevolence, through my foundation. And then I understand uh, the problems of my people, how uh, my people are getting it, are not getting it right each and every time we have a, a contest. So I decided to sacrifice myself, you know, leaving my, uh, uh, my uh, you know, affluence, uh, businesses and things, other things. And I want to be here to make sure that I deliver. I want to be part of history. I want to make a legacy, you know. I want to make something that is different. You know, I'm, I'm looking at going through the threshold of so many uh, businessmen that, that come into politics and build a legacy for themselves. And that is the reason why I am in this uh, race. I, don't, I can't say there's something different from what it was in 2013. It's still the same passion. It's, same, it's still the same people. It's still the same desire to give quality, value, education, quality education, secure my state, and then move my state forward. Let us not be on the threshold of beggary state. Let us be on the, on the threshold of people who are determined where the economy of this country is flowing. So if you're saying that, you, are you saying that you have better ideas than the person on the seat or some of your colleagues who are running for office? You're obviously telling us that you're the best candidate for the job. Is that what you're saying? Well, you can see it uh, from the people. Uh, most of the people that are contesting are some of the people that contested during our senatorial contest. And some of them came forth. And some of them um, didn't even contest. So for me, um, going to, to this um, contest, I am the better. I'm the best candidate for it. And uh, a number of people will uh, uh, determine that come sixth of November. Okay. So l let's get to know why you think you are the best candidate. First and foremost, let's take a look at your credentials because. That is going to be important for the people to choose amongst about 15 of you who are running for this office. What makes you the best candidate in terms of your credential, in terms of your history, in terms of your past, in terms of what you have done for yourself? Why should the people of Anambra State vote for you? Well, go to the street of Anambra today. I am the only one that has a known address in Anambra State. When we talk about politician with address, it means the politician that people understand where he comes from, understand what he does for them, and then also that have better understanding of them. I'm a selfless politician, and, and the people understand what I can do or capable of doing. Let me give you statistics. Uh, you remember when we had NSAS? I, I'm sure you know that I'm the only politician in Nigeria, not just an state, not just the Southeast the only politician in the whole country that comforted the, the NSAS uh, protesters. Why do you think I did so if I'm not with my people? How many of them can dare to do what I am doing? Okay, so um, we are not trying to, I'm not trying to blackmail or trying to run anybody down, but when the, um, they understand the fact that uh, if you look at also the pedigree of everybody politically, uh, in terms of hierarchy, I am number one before any of them currently. So uh, why wouldn't you think uh, somebody who has a, a grip of several local government already in his city will uh, take, uh, or will emerge the candidate? And why do you think I won't get it even when all of them contested same election that I contested just two years ago? And then I came with a very, a very big margin ahead of all of them, giving them 33,000, 30, almost 34,000 uh, 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 margin. I got 87,000. And then the second runner up came up with 52, the other one 51, the third, and the fourth, who is also contesting that, came with 14,000. Is it not the same Anambra state? If you have the first one, the first one has not uh, uh, crowned. You want this, you have the second one, you want the second one to run? It's not gonna be possible. It's not gonna be possible. In the in the senatorial election that also have a presidential election, and you came forth, now you are coming in and telling the people that you are uh, what kind of magic. Is it not people that will vote? Or are you going to manufacture your vote from here or from anywhere? Yeah, yeah, this is an umbrella state. 
So wh when you say that uh, you are you are top politically uh, in the ranking amongst your your peers or those who whom you're running, your colleagues whom you're running uh, for the office, what do you mean by that? But you can calculate and tell me if you have a better option. If you have somebody that is more than me currently, then let me know. I, I put it on to you to tell me. No, no, you, you, under, you understand. You for, for Nigerians to understand what you mean by politically you're am, above I, them. We want to understand I what believe, you mean I, by that. I believe, I, I believe the viewers know what I'm talking about. So if you don't understand it, you can now come out and tell me who your candidate is or who you think is more than me, who is more ranking than me politically, presently, currently. We talk about the I'm current affair. We are not talking about I'm speaking affair. on behalf of the viewers because the program is to tell them and ask you and for you to explain what you have in store for them. And so that's what I'm asking. So if it's not straightforward, and that's why I'm putting the question what again. Have you but when you said that you're top no, no, politically speaking, in what sense are you talking about? If you can break it down for us to understand well, better. Well, we are well, we talking about people. We are talking about our people. What the people, you know, you use a last election to, to put up uh, statistics. Yeah, statistics. We are talking about what the people want, whom the people want. You've not asked me of what I want to do for my people. So you are asking me, what do you think? Why do I think? I, tell, I told you, I am the best candidate. By ranking, I'm number one as well. By elected officers in the state, men. I'm, by, by men, I am second. So why, even if it's, uh, even if it's by uh, God, if, 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 after him, I will take the name. <laughs> well, okay. So uh, uh, shall, let's shall... now look at it now, uh, because I would like you for, to tell us uh, a few things about what you plan and your manifesto. I know that you're planning uh, your strategy differently from uh, how you ran for senatorial yeah. and how you ran in 2013. In 2013, I think you want only one local government. You want the senatorial election. This time around, what gives you the confidence that you can uh, coast home in this election? Why are, going, why are you going to 2014? You need to discuss 2019. There was 2019. So let us start from 2019. 2019, I won five of the local government, five out of seven. You know, so let's go to 2019, uh, Sean. <laughs> that is current. Affairs. That's a senatorial election. This is a general. This is a statewide yes. election. Uh, you have about 18 local no, governments in uh, Anambra no State. Was it 21 now? 21 local governments in there Anambra no, State. Uh, what gives you the confidence no that not only your senatorial election, because uh, being a senator or someone who wins a senatorial election will make you um, a sectional uh, politician who has control over a section of, of the state. How do you hope to win the entire state in this coming election? Well, you use, um, like our people used to, you use actual Wednesday to know how good Friday will be. Um, in the election we had in uh, 2019, senatorial election, it's all about the people of Anambra State. We are one color, we are the same people. So you use the statistics from that point to judge what's going to happen in this. Unfortunately, there was none of the contestants presently in this field that contested with me in 2013. So you cannot use uh, 2013 to, to judge what's going to happen. You can use what happened in 2019. The most important thing is our uh, manifesto. The most important thing is what we want to do for our people. You know, how we want to marshal out. And then it's, it's about collective efforts. You know, I am going to be the one, you know, the, mandate, the one with the mandate, but it's about, you know, my capability to muzzle and bring in people that will help, you know, to grow the state. And then also the ideas that I'm having, which is different from the ideas they're having. I am giving you ideas from the street perspective. And then from what people of Anambra State want, not from what people, uh, people coming from uh, nowhere will come and tell you uh, that, that they want to do. If before you start telling a number of people this time around that you want to do this and do that, you need to tell them what you have done. So when we get to that one, then I am leading because I'm with them. Okay, so you, you're being a businessman. So let's start from uh, your strength area uh, and we move from there. Uh, economy is very essential. You are... You're from Inewi. Inewi is uh, an economic hub in Anambra State. But beyond Inewi, 
you have Onicha, which is another, uh, there's another economic hub in Anambra State. Uh, with the level in which Anambra State is economically, in terms of IGR, in terms of the opportunities and the potentials that the state has, what is your plan, what is your agenda uh, in turning around the economy of Anambra State? Should you become the governor? Well, I said it earlier on, uh, the last time I had an interview with you, Shane, we want to, us, we want to set up what we call uh, uh, an, um, an um, commercially inclined governance, where we can work with businessmen and support businesses, especially looking at an umbrella that have close to 70% of Nigerian consumption franchises. So we want to look at that and see how we can partner with this uh, great Anambrians, great businessmen in Anambra State from Anambra region, and then also help to take away some of these uh, 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 humongous uh, declarations from different banks. We want to create economy that will evolve about supporting our own and then use it and use Anambra as a template for competitive, for industrialization, for competitive uh, commercial, you know, uh, entity, you know. So we have a very, very strong, that is one of the, our strongest uh, uh, um, a line of um, um, how we can uh, increase our IGR and uh, as well, you know, touch the lives of our people. So we want to state, we want to make Anambra State a very a super industrial hub in Nigeria, you know. And then you know we, that is my area of speciality, and that is what I intend to do. We are we are more of commercial people in Anambra State, and then it's not a joke. It is our own oil and gas, you know, over seventy percent of franchises in this country belong to my people, our people. So we want to partner with them and see how we can support their businesses and see how many of their businesses that can be domesticated back home in Anambra State so that we can help unemployment in Anambra State. We want to create uh, uh, industrial uh, clusters where we are also going to change narrative you know, for the use by, by inculcating uh, dormitories in the industries. We want, to, we, want to, we want to build a legacy. So I have a name to protect in this state I have so much uh, investment in this state that will make me to sit in Anambra State and work for the interest of people of Anambra State. And, and, then, and then partner with our great minds you know, in uh, diaspora so that they can bring in, uh, bring in a lot of um, uh, values to the governance in Anambra State. The most important thing is to state a very transparent and then all encompass uh, governance that will uh, touch the life of our people, home and abroad. Let's take a breather. But when we come back, I would like to ask you, you are from Inawi. Uh, Inawi is known for spare parts. And uh, what we wonder, how you hope that, uh, would I say, charity begins at home. From your home in Inawi, what you will do and how you hope to do it. We go into specifics of your manifesto and agenda for the people of Anambra State. We take a moment, everyone. But when we come back, also, our conversation will also be with the SDP candidate. He's our lawyer. Mr. Obina Uzo will be speaking with us after our conversation with Senator Ufanyuba as a battle for the Orca seat of power. Join us again, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. You know what we do right here. When you're talking about the news, you are right here on the nation's news leader, Channels Television. And when you talk politics, you're the right spot because we lead in politics reportage in the nation. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. And our mandate here at Channels Television is to give you the best of election reporting and politics. And so what we're doing tonight is also to part of our engagement with the candidates who are running for office. And tonight we have two of them. We've been speaking with one of them, Senator Ifan Yoruba. He's a sitting, sitting senator representing Anambra State in the National Assembly and is gunning for the number one seat in Anambra State. And we're asking why, what can he do? Can he do better than uh, those who are in office or those who are running alongside of him? Senator Ifan Yoruba, before we went on that break, I was preparing your mind on the next question, which is, in a way, your hometown is known for spear parts marketing and uh, sales. So one will wonder if it has that kind of profile for itself, it turned a lot of people around to, a lot of people know for spear parts selling. It's hidden in the heart of uh, uh, the Southeast, but it has that profile. 
have you thought about, because there's a charity be begins at home. So if you are thinking of how you want to change the economics of Anambra State around, what have you thought about your hometown in Ewe? What's your plan? Well, so uh, first and foremost, uh, apologies. Uh, you can't bring Ewe down to own this paper itself. Uh, Ewe, please, uh, if, I can, if I have to remind you, is the super hub, industrial hub, um, not only for Anambra State of Southeast and Nigeria. Uh, you don't bring in Newi. Newi is a very uh, industrial town that, um, that can challenge so many states in this country. Uh, you have um, uh, edibles, you have uh, different types of, you have automotive industry, that's true, but not just sales. So I want to correct you on that. So I did not make mistake about that again. So when I said uh, that, we, I'm talking, I mean, there are, there are cities around the world that are popular for a certain thing. Do, no, doesn't mean that that's the no, only no, thing no, they no, do. No, no, so no, in no, a no, way, no, no. in the minds of, for so many years, I mean, for someone who grew up in the north central part of the country, um, I've known in a way for years, and that's what is popular for. So I'm, I'm asking you, for a lot of people who have not been yeah. to in a way before, or who don't know an Ambrose State, and they've been hearing, uh, in a way, for what is popular for, not one thing that is known for. And that's why I'm asking you the question, what would, do you want to do you about with five, in a way? I, I can give you about five, I, I can give you about 10 different uh, industries that has no relation with automotive papers that are, are championing the, 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 the giant in their areas of species in, their, in Nigeria. But let us look at in a way, in a way is known for papers, and then uh, we are the automotive hub of not just Nigeria, of West Africa, this is where, you know, this is number one stop in terms of um, automotive uh, motorcycles, papers, uh, vehicle automotive papers, and also automotive assembly plant as well. So um, you are not far from it, but I don't just want to, to not only we are just papers, marketers, and sellers. You know, it has developed, it has blossomed. Here you can have Jolly Jolly, you can have Tommy Tommy noodles, you know, um, bigger, than, uh, bigger than any other noodles industry in the whole country. You know, you have so many things in Newe that is going on for us, and uh, um, I don't want to name Newe people to, to, to... So, to, yeah, to, so the to, question to, is to that those opportunities are, are potentials that are there. What do you plan? Because, they, like I said earlier, they well, say charity we, begins uh, well, at home. So if in a way has that kind of potential, uh, let's take it as a sample of the, your plan and your agenda. Do you have it in what, your plan to turn things around? And how would you do, what, what, do it? What we want to do is to segregate the markets of Anambra State. On which I represent the biggest market in West Africa. So, and um, if you look at Onisha, we need to segregate a lot of businesses in Onisha. We don't over, um, overcrowd Onisha. So we are going to run, uh, first and foremost, have a local government election, and then move different products to different local governments. So that product, the product will start generating economy for the same to many in, uh, local governments. And that is one of the areas we are looking at, you know, uh, stabilizing the local government uh, economy by, you know, moving so many of that. And then we intend to start bringing in our people back home, creating a business hub and creating business ideas that can enable our people from China, from all over the world to import products what, without... What are these ideas? Money. You know, you've mentioned uh, clusters yeah. and these Allow hubs. In specific, because these are generalized terms that you're using, the, the people no, that you, want to vote for you want to know in specifics, what exactly are you talking about? How would you do it? Because these are ideas that one can just Google up anywhere and you'll find. These are manifestos I that globally you, you, people you, create ops, people you, create uh, clusters. You, but I how mean, would you do it specifically for a number of people? It, it starts with local government election, which we are going to have in six months. And then it starts with relocating of so many other businesses and government will support businesses to this local government. And then we create what we call local government autonomy. And then you don't just have local government, don't just, we don't just want local government to be having their money from Abuja. We want to also to create industrial clusters in local government and then create businesses in local government by partitioning so many businesses that clustered into one areas into this local government and then we create. I show I'm, best, I'm the best guy in this and you know I can do it. And I'm probably will know what I'm ready to, I'm capable of doing. The most important thing is supporting businesses. It starts from supporting our indigenous traders, our indigenous importers, our indigenous industrialists, and then giving them enough 
giving them value for whatever they are doing, and then also give them opportunity to excel in their respective local government and make sure that we distribute wealth in different local governments of Alhambra State. That is one key thing no one has ever done before, no one has ever said before. That is what I want to do. And I don't want to be moved from what I'm saying. Right. So take it, that is what I'm saying. Okay, good. Uh, I would have loved to go into education uh, and how that is important because when you talk about education, Anambra State is also very known for academic excellence for several years now. Why uh, NECO and all of that and how that can also be, uh, uh, be used for uh, the development of the people of the state. But let me go into security because that's a major problem. The IG has, uh, uh, has announced an overhaul of the security architecture within the police rank in Anambra State. But first and foremost, we saw that you, uh, you have, uh, uh, you've signed up or you stood up, uh, you came to Abuja uh, at the trial of uh, Inamdi Kanu. And there is a major story about the threats on the ground against the election, about the, the security of the election. Uh, what's your relationship uh, in, this re in this respect? Well, my relationship uh, is on um, the fact that uh, he's, a, he's a force to break on with. I mean, uh, you cannot I have constituency, I have people from my constituency, I understand that they have a lot of sympathy for him. And I am representing a constituency. I cannot have a demand from my constituency and then I will share it away. And I don't have to because I have signed a pact to represent my constituency. So if my constituency wants me to do something, you know, I am doing something humanitarian and as well trying to, you know, balance and bring in a, a, profile, a political solution. You know, that is why I am there. And that is why I'm also pleading with the federal government to look into these things and then see how, if really they feel for the people of Southeast, for the people of Anambra State, let us see how we can use the political solution to resolve this issue. And that is why I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm what doing. What is the political solution you are talking about? How do you hope to go about it? Is that a solution to the security well, situation well, in Anambra State? Is it at home and all of that? Well, uh, every, even in world countries, every challenges you have that brings in a lot of chaos in, uh, in, uh, in any country, it's always resolved in a table, in a round table. There is no way in the world you don't resolve things in a round table. We, from the people, we are, we are also lamenting about the lopsidedness in terms of appointment. We are also lamenting about, you know, how Igbos are being referred in this country. It is something that everybody needs to know. It, you know, it's not, it, it goes beyond me trying to become the governor of Anambra State. So the question is, are we ready? Are we ready? Do we love ourselves in this country? If we love ourselves, let's prefer solution, political solution to so many things. Not only in the country, in the country, in the country. So let's, cla let's the, clarify the, 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 now. The, 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 you people. identified with Enam Dekanu and IPOB. That is your stand. And that is how you think you can resolve the security situation in your state. Just a quick one before we wrap up. No, security situation in my state has a different method I am going to apply. I am going to apply, you know, information technology, information gathering. This is only state in Nigeria in the next, by the grace of God, in the next 90 days, if I'm elected into, um, uh, um, if I'm elected as governor of Anambra State uh, on the 6th of uh, uh, November, I'm going to uh, get, bring in everyone we are going to look at how we can communicate. Every community, every, every local government will have their own apparatus of walkie-talkie. You know, they can, the, the communication will come easy. Every home that wants to key into... Uh, 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 all right, Sen Senator, we, we're out of allow town, allow but the allow earlier allow question allow I allow asked you, me. that you, had, you had, do you identify with IPOP and Enam Dekanu? Is that your stand on that matter? You identify with them? My constituency asked me to go and to see how I can prefer political situation to issues that surround Sunday And for God's sake, I have no apologies. That is what I'm doing. I went to DSS, I met the DG, and he told me to go to the court. I met the director of operation. He told me to go to the court. I did this thing without letting anyone know. 
And I went to court and I have filed to the court to give me access to him. All right. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> We need to leave it at that because uh, we need to switch over to an, yet another candidate that we have on the program. But we, we must sincerely thank you for your time tonight. Senator Patrick Ufanyuba, the candidate of the YPP in the Anambra governorship election. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.